we just finished up a section working with data frames so now we're going to some exercises and if you're following along in the book this is page 53 and it refers to looking at exercise box 3.2 handling data frames I've worked through all the exercises myself but on here I'll just do some of the ones that I thought were most interesting or had some things to talk through so the first one I'll paste in here is the number one and I thought it was useful to look uh, again just at the steps for generating a data frame rather than reading it in from a file so the exercise is generate a data uh, generate a data frame ABC that contains the letters A to J so I'll have to we could probably do it all in one uh, but I'm going to do I'll call it X and letters oh and it had to be there's 10 letters so it's 1 through 10 and I'll just make sure I'm on the right track it's plural letters and I can look over here at values and see that I am on the right track. I'll keep going. Put it into Y. And this should just be 1 through 10. Let's see if that's right. All right. It generated it. And then this should be a data frame X and Y. I missed a dash here one more time and then I look at ABC so one of the things that we want to do is to have the columns called letters and numbers and I'm noticing that as I created it it gave the the column names the same as the variable names so since I already created it this way I'm gonna going to change the names the way that I was expecting to and I'm just going to do C to put it together and name them letters and numbers and I'll do ABC one more time and there we have it so that would finish it but what I expect would happen is if I did all of this, I could do all of this in one step. Makes me a little uncomfortable calling a variable the same as one of the functions, but uh, I looked through the way that he did it in uh, his exercises and he actually did this as well. And so when you assign it, I think that it overrides it locally. Uh, because I did try this and it works. Uh, so run each of them. We've got letters and numbers. Create our data frame. ABC. And there in three lines, it ran it. So the most important thing for me to remember is that when I create the variables and then put it into a data frame that it it makes the, the name of the columns and that's useful and the next one we'll move on is number two and the my location is a little bit different than this so I'll just account for that as I am reading so we have a text file that is in one of the uh, one of the files that was already given to us so into a data frame such that the first row is recognized as the column names and we want to be able to access all the columns so we don't we want to make sure that the first column does not become a row name so I'm going to load it into what should I call it I'll call it new frame and I'm going 
to read table is what we've been doing so I'll keep doing read table and this reminds me of all my parameters which is useful so the file equals or I could do choose file and I noticed from the way that he solved this I did just choose file um, but he did choose files and then gave a default which I think is very helpful for taking uh, me right to where I want to go want to go so I'm going to put this in here mine is quant corp r and then I changed mine so that it is input files and it should be this so let's see reading a table what are the parameters okay I was looking at how I did this before and what I'm going to do to remind myself of all the parameters the ones that I know I'm going to use are header and this time is going to be true because the default is false sep I don't actually know which way this file is separated but I'm going to say that it's tab separated and see how this reads it in and oops, I've been doing quote equals this so I don't have to worry about it let me try this and it already brings up from where I have it saved and the name of the file I'll say open it and I want to look at new frame and there it is so I did tab separated and it read it all in now just because I'm curious and it's a potential that another time I would not know how the file were separated suppose I said it were just space separated and I'm gonna call this new frame dot two so that I can still work with new frame I'm gonna read it in and let's say new frame two interesting that did not work very well so apparently it was tab separated make the columns available for further processing so if we go with new frame then we are done with that the next one actually goes really quickly so I'll do it as well since it's working with this same data frame uh, this is extracting some of the information from it now suppose since it's extracting suppose we we're taking it out to work with it for some other purpose uh, I'll call this extracted dot one and suppose that we're doing the a part the second and third column so we are going to need I'm gonna work with new frame and I'm going to remove new frame too since it really didn't do me any good all right so new frame I want to extract first uh, the second and third columns so I'm going to say I want all the rows second through third and I could do a C statement but let's try that and extracted dot one so it's all the rows second and third column and if we want to come up here in second and third and we have it let's try the B part and again we're working with the new frame the third and fourth row so we're working with row this time since they're right next to each other the colon works 
very well. And I'm going to keep go doing that. And comma, since we want all of the columns. And let's look at it. There we have it. And let's do one more that is related to splitting up and using just part of the data. So split the frame. Since I hadn't looked at split before, and I did with this just as I was looking through this myself. So split divides the data according to one vector defined by another. So split it by vector f, x defined by f. So we should be able to split the data frame. So we want to split our data frame according to the contents of the second column. So let's say that it were new frame and second column. Will this give us the second column. All right, so then that split it, split it up. Let me do new frame and see just really quickly what our second column is. Our second column has ob uh, objects and subjects. So splitting it by the second column gave us objects as one and subjects as another. If we put that into another variable, then we could hold on to those two, but we won't worry about that for now. And let's stop there.